Hello everybody, today is January 15th, 2013. This is Beacon 147, episode 5 of season 2. And we're going to start right now. Hello everybody, this is Thomas, and joining me tonight we have Bobby, as always. And sitting in the third chair today, the hot seat, actually the second chair on the video stream, but third, third, whatever, I can't do math. <laughs> so, somewhere, somewhere, somewhere on your screen, probably in the center of your screen, uh, we have Brandon, who is known as Caden3, if I'm not mistaken, on, uh, on the tubes of the U, joining us today. And uh, we're going to talk about Sims, or what is it, SimCity 5 going <laughs> offline. <laughs> so they're going to have some offline play. So a feature that a few people requested. No, anyway. So uh, no, in all honesty, we're going to talk a little bit about the show. But before we talk about Star Citizen, we're going to announce the winner of our mouse pad. And if you look in which which this direction right here, you can see that Bobby is holding up a large cylindrical box, which he keeps mm -hmm. toys for his pleasure. It's I, wonder so what, shiny. Whoa. <laughs> I, I wonder what's in this box. I, I don't know. It's it looks like it's one of those mouse pads that are kind of kind of hard to get now. That that special version that oh that sold out version that doesn't yeah. exist anymore that you can't buy even if you want to buy one. Yeah, I think it's one yeah. of those. Yeah, that yeah. person sitting next to us, Caden, Brandon, happened to win one. So uh, he, yeah. he's our lucky winner. He followed the simple three rules of YouTube. He liked, commented, and subscribed. And um, we thought he had a pretty decent post. Um, he mainly talked about um, boogers and um, farts, <laughs> you know, whatever. He had Relevant Bob and his, topics, his YouTube yes. tank army attacking Google+. Yeah. Plus. You know, all the things that YouTube comments are known for. So uh, you too could win oh, one of these things um, by like, commenting, and subscribing. And Gradius, what's in the mystery box for this week's competition? All right, so... We do have a, we do have another mouse pad. Um, I don't have it with me. I should have brought it with me. But we do have another mouse pad. I I think is it the Origin the, mouse pad? I think it is. Okay, I think it is. Well, I happen to have an Origin mouse pad. <laughs> <laughs> As you I think someone just died. <laughs> okay. So I happen to have one. Uh, this is not the one you're getting, unless you want this autographed. I'm not. I'm. I, you know, I'll autograph. Oh, yes. But uh, <laughs> oh so uh, let me reassemble. Is that coffee stain that you're referencing is a gum. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to answer any questions uh, <laughs> that might self-incriminate me. But okay, um, have, have you caught yourself doing this, man? Ever since I got mine, mm -hmm. I have like my desk has magically been cleaner. And um, I, I don't like if I see a crumb or anything on it, it goes away like immediately. Bobby. I, and I'm not like this, dude. I am Bobby. not like that. You have you have oh, seen, you know, that was a dumb my question. Tendencies You're right. Dumb question. <laughs> I have I have way too much on my desk right now. And I think it's I have a newspaper on my desk and, and I feel trashy you. because I have a newspaper on my it's, desk that I haven't fully it, read yet. It's killing you inside, isn't it? Yeah. At least it's not popcorn. But uh, <laughs> different stories for different days. All right. So going back to the topic at hand, uh, Brandon, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with Star Citizen and all that fun stuff. And we're just going to sit and stare and make you feel uncomfortable. <laughs> I think Bobby's the one who makes me feel most uncomfortable. <laughs> he's got that glaze over his eyes that just goes, hmm. He's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got involved with uh, Star Citizen by watching a, a video on a website, an interview with uh, Chris Roberts. And okay. I knew who he was, familiar with his work, and I read about the Kickstarter that he had tried to run, or he had ran, and it really piqued my interest. So I got into it, and I became a little self-obsessed with it. Which I think many people do when they find out. I, um, I, I, I can't relate. I don't. No. 
I, I don't understand at all what you're talking about. You're a world apart from that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Self well, obsessed it, with this game. <laughs> God, this game is hanger. what this is. It's, it's a big hanger, right? Yeah. So, so um, yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Are you a subscriber, or do you? Uh, are you just your your backer? I, I am a subscriber. Um, cool. I uh, I do it the monthly thing for cool. just the ten bucks a month, but you know, it keeps uh, Spaceman's parking lot going. That's, that's that's true. He he his parking fees can get expensive. Exactly. Nice to double park. What is it? I'm sorry. Good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> I don't think we are. I, I, I think that there is his parking fees. <laughs> it wasn't that funny. I mean, I'm I'll sorry. take the last where I can get them. I'm but sorry. It wasn't I'm, that sorry. Funny. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> um. Well, anyways, guys, uh, we're we're glad to have Brandon with us. He'll stick around for 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 a couple episodes. See what we think. Um, be yeah. here. Thanks. Yeah. Be here. For, be here for a while. Um, and you know, until we get tired of him, decide to have him murdered. <laughs> um, there were several Bothan spies, and, and Brandon's killed during the making of this episode. So, uh, but uh, anyway, we're glad to have you. We, we we hope you enjoy your stay. We hope to have you on for an indefinite period amount of time. So uh, we're we're glad you're joining. It's always nice to have new blood in the ranks, uh, mainly because Gradius is a sparkly vampire and needs to drink. So. <laughs> But, it's um, getting kind of hot in here. Yeah. Burn it. <laughs> so, uh, we we going back to our to our the reason we like our like comments and subscribes on YouTube not only because you can win an Origin mouse pad that just magically you know appeared in front of your screen as I destroyed my desk for it. Um, the reason is because it gives us ideas that we can talk about. We're in um, the that lull. You know, there's really not too much going on. We could be like the other shows out there and dissect every piece of information that comes out you know all the way down to what is in quadrant three of this pixelated orange background with a docking collar as they discuss a plant that's really not what we're here to do we're more here to discuss general topics about you know the game and right now there's really not a whole lot out yet we don't have our dfm we don't have the social stuff out to uh, dive into group building so we're just going to do a lot of speculating and editorial and somebody gave us the suggestion, and I think it's worth taking a look at. They wanted to see the Cutlass, since the Cutlass is now available in Hangar. And um, we spent a few minutes before the show started uh, taking a look at the Cutlass. Uh, it is in my Hangar. Those of you watching on the video can now see me standing in front of my Cutlass. Um, if I was a much better person than, than who I am, uh, than the person that I actually am, I would pull up my stream so uh, our co-host could actually see what I am seeing. Um, Flying blind. So Dirty player. Dirty player. Let me hit that broadcast button for you guys so you can see what I see. We can see what you see 20 seconds after you see it. Yes, but um, while it's loading up, I'm just kind of showing the exterior shot of the ship. Uh, I'm wearing the traditional uniform. I probably should have switched to the space pirate uniform. <laughs> that I'm in that one. The cool um, leather jacket. Yeah, uh, on the outside and of the he, ship, you've got... Go hair. ahead, I'm sorry. He has hair. Yeah, that is yes, true. He, <laughs> he does have hair. Yes. All right, so we're looking at the exterior of the ship. We see the, the front cockpit. Um, it has an offset design. It's, design. it's not the standard centered cockpit seat. So you can kind of see there the control modules and uh, the chairs. It has two winglet type structures in the front and these are my technical terms my winglets uh, some, <laughs> your, your, run... your Kerbal Space Program uh, terms <laughs> yes I've got my um, two engines here on the side uh, they look like they are on rotating thingies to get uh, in, in enhanced maneuverability on the back of the ship we have additional thrust points and all that fun stuff with some larger winglets in the back. We're gonna go in through the back door of the ship now. Um, my least favorite part of the ship, Bobby's favorite, he, he told me this morning how much he oh. loved it. Um, <laughs> the space toilet. Oh yes, the, yeah. the kadoosh machine. Yeah, um, I cannot think of anything more frightening. If I had to do, do this, um, I can't think of anything more frightening. Okay, well, you know what? I just I just had a thought. 
the I can't call it the Kadoosh machine anymore. I have to call it Slick Shoes. You know, from Goonies. You know the I can't remember his name. Can't remember. I'm gonna I'm gonna mess it up. But the Asian kid who has all the gadgets. We'll call him right. Inspector Gadget. You know. He's uh, spraying oil and crap out of the back of his shoes. So after you use the toilet, if you're in a if you're in a dog fight, you just go and uh, do your business, and you'll get away. Your enemy will not be able to keep up with you. And here's that, that awkward. Here, here, here's the awkward silence that I was prepared <laughs> for. Well, I thought I was prepared for. Yeah. Yep. There it goes. Um. You were saying something, Brandon. I, I, I know that my the stream kind of quality always gets a little funky when uh, when I do this. But what were you saying about the toilet? Well, the because this thing, is the number one topic. The, the, yes. The toilet. Well, the big thing about the toilet is that you know if you've been in a military aircraft or in a small space, you're not going to have a lot of luxury attached to it. You know, I was on a, a C-135, and you know, we were the only thing that they had for privacy was a, a shower curtain. So, I can see why this is needing to be as uh, lacking the luxury that it does, because you have a finite amount of space. Now, this is going to not show up very well for you guys, and, and probably isn't showing up very well for those of you who are watching in standard definition, but by the toilet, there is overspray, and I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> there is some overspray. I think that Consuela needs to come in here and do some cleanup work. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> okay, wait, 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 okay. See, at first I thought it was nice. It was a nice feature. You get up from the toilet, you hit a little button, and it sprays a nice vanilla scent. But now you're <laughs> telling me that if I look up, I'm gonna see little chunks of stuff on the ceiling? I'm, I'm just telling you, I, I hate the fact that I've reduced myself to potty humor, but there is <laughs> overspray nowhere else on the ship but by the toilet. That's all I gotta say. I saw uh, this. Th that was that's the part, honestly, that's most disturbing about this entire experience for me, is the fact that there's overspray. But moving beyond the toilet, uh, from the back door in, you know, enter through the rear. Uh, you've got your primary storage bay area, uh, and I'm assuming that these are cots on the side. You know, you've got your two little places, you know, um, where people can sleep. Um, got you know, just your big cargo bay. You've got your docking, I'm assuming, docking thingies on the side here for you to dock with thingies. And I would trip. think the one on the bottom, though, is the one that has that docking collar that they talk about that comes with the ship. I think you're right. Um, above that uh, is, is, a, is a jump seat where it looks like um, when you're doing your humanitarian missions, you kind of you know hop up in that jump seat and uh, drop your, um, your care packages of love. For people. I was about to. I was about to say a humanitarian mission, huh? Mm -hmm. In a pirate ship. Yeah. It's, uh... Humanitarian mission. Packets of love. I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, you've got your two, uh, your two piloting seats. Um, the second one, the higher one, uh, does not appear to be functional, nor does the uh, humanitarian distribution seat. It doesn't uh, appear to be functional at this point in time. Uh, but you can, in fact, get in the front one and take a look at the displays. This is a known bug, but when in the seats and kind of moving around your camera, uh, the displays uh, kind of flicker in and out. They're not uh, perfectly rendered yet, um, but they are beautifully detailed, extremely high definition, uh, lots of gauges that mean absolutely nothing yet, um, but definitely very nice looking. It's certainly beautiful to see that not all the panels are being cut and pasted from other ships that they've already done. Yeah. It's it's all unique, and I love that touch that they're doing. It makes every ship feel unique, and that's a touch of class. It is. I mean, it really is. I kind of adjusted the, the camera angle here. For those of you who are watching, you can kind of get an idea of just how complex uh, these panels are with information on there. Um, you know, you've got engine outputs and um, you know if your targets in which you're distributing your humanitarian aid I'm sure would show up very well on here as well um, kind of transitioning the camera angle looks so you can look at some of the exterior shots you can see the shark nose look on the front uh, as well as um, some cross swords of peace um, to let you know all of your friends know that you're coming in and mean no harm so um, now the the uh, the now the version you got was from the pirate pack, right? Now that's um, 
we were talking about this, you know, pre-show, but you were saying that the co- the colors don't match up, right? Well, they do and they don't. If you okay. look on their website, I'm going to... Uh, the ship, for those of you who aren't watching uh, along, the primary base color of the ship on the exterior is white, and it's accented with uh, a strong uh, orange or red color um, right, right. with its uh, di- diplomatic uh, insignia uh, throughout in the red. It looks very neutral. It's diplomatic insignia. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the diplomatic insignia. Um the ships on the website, if, if you browse through, you'll see a, most of them are referenced in gray. Uh, however, for uh, the some of them you see in white. I think personally, okay. it would so maybe look it's better a skin. in gray. Could be, um, okay. but I do personally think the ship would look far better for my own liking if it was in kind of gray. Um, but then again, having the probably would help if I switched cameras again. Um, then again, I personally um, think that uh, if you're flying a humanitarian ship, it should be white. And um, oh, if you are using the peace. humanitarian ships for um, less than humanitarian means, it should probably be gray. But, so I know that some people are kind of getting that color yeah. discontinuity. But anyway. Yeah, and for those who actually uh, have the subscriber benefits, there is actually a jump point mm-hmm. out there that showed a lot of different color schemes and that's just one of them that they chose so i'm wondering if at some point the way that they're going to change that is through the um, voyager direct store and give you that ability to change that skin that way and we we do have the pledge skins that are available i mean this that's the the one that's um that's probably the gray one that a lot of people are, are are used to seeing is probably the skull and crossbones um uh, skin, you know the the pirate yeah. skin that's available, um, and in its white and red form, it's more. I think I think honestly, the more appropriate term is it's the Coast Guard version of the ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Red. Yeah. And so uh, now, it, are the I, of course I don't have any, but with the custom skins, are we able to change those out now using the the in hangar terminal or whatever? Or how? Does, no, not yet. Okay, okay. So um. I, I don't really, honestly, I don't even think that they fully know how they're going to be, uh, how they're going to work. I mean, if you notice there for a while, there were several of them that mm-hmm. they were releasing and they kind of stopped. Um, yeah. They, they really haven't put any more out. So I think they're trying to figure out what's the best way that we can do this. And maybe in a worst case scenario, if we can't do this in a really good way, let's limit the amount that's out there. So people don't maybe. Yeah, aren't so as probably, disappointed. It's probably just going to be, you know, how you get your terminal, right? You, you, you hit tab and you scroll around for weapon ship, you know, all the different slots. I wonder if they could just add it there. You're going to be changing that though. Yeah. The they, oh, that's right. The though they are. Gonna be changing. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, of course the discussion being at the same price point and I'm hoping the stream clear, the Skype call cleared up for you guys. Um, and yep. let me know. Okay, good. Um, a main discussion point is which ship would you prefer at the same price point? You could have gotten the cutlass, or the freelancer. I guess those are kind of the the yin and yang of that price point. And yeah. we were we were looking at some of the different capacities. Obviously, the freelancer has more cargo capacity, and uh, the cutlass has less, but the cutlass has more firepower. I guess I'm assuming that that's the the logical trade off. Um, well, you know, I was actually kind of looking at that, and <clears throat> like the cutlass has. Uh, more of the lower slots, but the freelancer has one of one class five slot. So I don't know. I kind of in a, in a fight between a cutlass and a freelancer. Yeah, I think well, the I, freelancer I, may win out because that's a man turret right there. Oh, is it? True. Okay, yeah. nice. Class five is all man turrets, and that I think would make or break in a fight if you got to rely on. Uh, straight firing just to get a target on. And of course my opinion is completely biased because I will be flying a freelancer. But uh <laughs> it's so pretty. It really is. I think it's a pretty ship. I love it. That's the one ship that looks to me looks very firefly to me. It, it does. does. It it has that overtone certainly. Yeah. What what really got me though was with the uh freelancer when they uh, first showed it off the um I thought it, you know, wasn't going to work 
the way they were talking the weapon loadout and everything it just didn't seem like it could fit everything they were saying and then when they got more information out there it came together beautifully yeah uh, we were we were kind of talking about the cutlass from a design point of view and aesthetically i don't really care for it um it's 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 not what i'm after um how do you guys feel not let's let's not necessarily talk so much about the the textures and you know the poly counts but aesthetically does that look and feel like a pirate ship to you or i don't i don't to me it, it looks i don't know how to describe it looks, it. It looks like, like a boarding ship to me it feels more that it's going to be it, it's one of those to get in there quick and get out quickly it's not meant to be uh anything to t- take the booty and take it back to uh their port or whatever it doesn't feel that like that kind of ship it feels more of a a get in get out yeah i kind of, i'm kind of looking at it and the ship by itself it it looks kind of kind of plain but we haven't seen it with all those class 4 class 3 class 2 you know turrets and stuff on right. it yet and i yeah, I'm just kind of I'm just kind of looking at the picture right now on the on the pledge page, and I could kind of see this thing if it if it had a, a lot of guns and stuff on it and uh and the docking collar and tractor beam or whatever, this thing could could look pretty mean. Yeah. Well, I think what really throws me off when I first look at it is the 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 center of the ship. You have this oval, and then all of a sudden. A triangle with the wings coming out on the top so it doesn't necessarily always feel like it's i'm i'm looking at it and it feels like it's a smooth transition so yeah. that makes it feel a little weird it almost it almost kind of looks like you know from from the angle <clears throat> that i'm looking at it here that that center pod you're talking about that oval yeah it almost seems like that could like detach or maybe something else go there kind of right. like starfarer or something like that you know but uh or the aurora with its the yeah car- yeah the cargo the back. Bay. yeah yeah i haven't thought of it that way but i see your see where you're coming from. i mean i don't i don't think it's gonna be that way but it, yeah. it looks like when they were designing it maybe that was where the you know they were kind of going with it but yeah. yeah maybe you know maybe now that i'm kind of looking through i, I and i'm showing this on the uh, video for everyone at the on the i pulled up the subscriber page and i'm looking at it I, I think it's the white color that really just kind of, I hate to say it's something as simple as color that yeah. makes it not look yeah. the way I kind of want it to look. I, I look at it in, in the white and the red, and it doesn't feel aggressive to me. It yeah. feels aggressive when I see it in the black. I agree. And, and maybe that's maybe that's the biggest flaw for me. Um, playing a playing something that i don't like to do the devil's advocate card we waited a long time for this yeah how do you yeah. do you feel like this was worth the wait or do you feel like it was maybe a little under delivered i would say it's a little under delivered just in the fact that there's not as much in there that you can use compared to other ships that haven't right. been worked on as long so I, I i do feel that that was a little uh, uh people who have been waiting so long felt a little cheated in that regard but they are still working on it, right? So I'm I'm thinking that with uh you know with with them releasing it, I mean because it is the latest one to be released um, as far as the hangar module goes. Um, I think that it's it's not necessarily done from the well you know like the skin point of view that sort of thing. Right. I think I think they just got it out, got put the default skin on it. And I think that once, uh, you know, once they start letting us mount some of the higher weapons and stuff like that on the ships, matter of fact, I think, the, I think you can now you can. I'll have to yeah. double check. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, I think if someone had a bunch of class three, class four weapons, they loaded up their, their cut list and it had that skin that I think, you know, the more piratey skin that, cause you know, to be honest, I mean, people who bought the cut list, you know, if you read the description, it's, you know, I've asked me hardies, you know, it's, it's the pirate ship, you know, so they, they get the ship and it's got the coast guardy look on it. You know, it's kind of, eh, you know, so I think melodramatic. Yeah. 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 
So I, th- I think if they, I think if they get that, you know, gunmetal black or gray, you know, shiny, right. you know, yeah. skull and crossbony, you know, kind of blend yeah. in with the stars give, color, you know, you give it that gritty look, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. No, just, I, I think that, I think that that's exactly it. You know, I, just the, the Coast Guard look to it, you know, with the really the only thing that lets you know that it's a pirate ship is the, uh, the swords of peace. Uh, that are crossed that's the only way you know that it's really yep. uh, you know a, yeah. not a humanitarian vessel but if you look at the gray skin you do have the skull and crossbones on that gun turret um you know you do have a skull there it looks uh, looks aggressive so i think that yeah. maybe that's my kind of disappointment with it it has to do with you know i'm expecting a badass pirate ship something that jack sparrow would be proud of and yeah. i'm getting something here that is you know looks like somebody who isn't represented in the Pentagon would be flying. No offense. To the <laughs> well, maybe it's just me, but you know, I'm I wouldn't like... mind, <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind seeing like on a pirate ship, something that looks, again, I keep saying it, but the going back to, you know, pirates and they're not exactly the, the cleanest and, you know, uh, I don't know, just adding stuff like rust and, you know, a little damage looking crap all over the ship, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, make it look rustic. I wouldn't mind if they had a skin like that for it. Yeah, show me, show me some some bullet wounds and yeah. Yeah. Because I'm you, you know, you're never you're never afraid of the pirate. Go ahead. I'm not sure that the bullets in space would work so well though. <laughs> well, we're going to avoid all physics conversations. Yeah, right. <laughs> but but you know, because undoubtedly uh, we piss somebody off when we discuss physics. Who's going to be scared of the pirate ship? that is looks like it, it's off the showroom floor you know i'd be more scared of the pirate ship that's got a little character yeah i'm just saying yeah so um so we, so we made our comparisons we talked about you know kind of maybe our initial impressions and i think that you know for the most part we think that when it's skinned and we know that they will be able to be skinned it'll kind of have that more aggressive look is there anything else that you would have done to it to maybe a, not necessarily just color wise or skin wise is there any was there anything design characteristically that you would have liked to have seen differently like when i look at the 300 series and uh you know the the m50 those are sleek sexy looking ships i I like the way those look when i compare that to the connie i'm like yeah i kind of wish that the connie had some of these design characteristics when i look at the, the the cutlass my initial thing is i want it to look sharper i don't you know i want it to have kind of blade type appearances to it that's kind of what i was i mean i knew i wasn't getting that i had concept art but i would kind of like it to see more blade ish more aggressive daggery looking what, what do you guys think am i just crazy i don't think so um i think something like that would be kind of cool uh mm-hmm. i mean hell I mean, even even going far in, um, well this is this is getting kind of out there but you know, maybe some of those solar sails, or you know, or something like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, just it's a pirate ship, you know. Yeah, solar sails on a pirate ship. That's a really cool concept. Someone yeah. from the next yeah. great starship, listen in. Design us yeah. a ship of solar sails. Yeah, that would be nice. Or well, I completely think... impractical in combat. We we know that. Oh, of course. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a garbage. cruise ship. It, yeah. Think of it that way. It could be a cruise ship. Yeah. Yeah, you have a whole bunch of these inside of it. They just pop mm-hmm. out and go to town on you. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Or, well, uh, I, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, the only thing I could think that they, you know, that I would want to change, but I can't really see it happening as far as gameplay goes, is because Drake makes things that are affordable. Right. So maybe this is how they get around a manufacturing process to make things cheaper. You know, that's yeah. why it has those things in those situations to with that ship <laughs> Drake <laughs> makes their ship and they're like here here's our you know our nice clean ship that's obviously it's... not preferred by pirates it's just a nice clean wonderful ship and uh you know oh by the way we're partnered with this company next door that'll totally change all your serial numbers and you know paint it different <laughs> colors and stuff like that but they're not us they're not Drake yes. no. well here's your <laughs> bathtub and w- here's your bathtub with wings yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, and we, yeah, and we encourage you to do all humanitarian mis- mes- missions yeah, with your, yeah, you know, your your care package of love distributor, you know, distribution yeah. points. So and rescue all those poor diplomats that are floating around in space with this tractor beam. 
and those yeah. orphan children think of the children <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one, one thing on the inside of the ship. Okay, so we're talking pirate ship, right? Mm -hmm. I, you know, we're talking. You know, you pull up to a disabled ship. You pull out the the you know the docking arm or whatever, right? You know, the collar, and uh, you're drilling it. You're drilling into someone else's hull. Okay, they've got a crew size of two. I get it, but in the back, you've got to have a bunch of guys getting ready to go down this collar onto the other ship, right? Mm -hmm. So. In the back, they need arms lockers. They need uh, cells to put prisoners in. Because, I mean, yeah. unless you're just going to kill them all. But, you know, you think pirates. If you're doing you humanitarian think... missions, you wouldn't kill them all. <laughs> well, you, you, you think, okay, so we're going onto this enemy ship. We're either going to kill them all or we're going to hold them hostage and hold them for ransom. That's what pirates do. Yeah. Right. So, in this huge cargo bay or, you know, whatever. I kind of think it needs to be less cargo, more military, or not, you know, not military, but, you know. Assault. Ass Support. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I yeah. mean, if this is going to be a, a ship that you dock, you know, you do a hard dock on another ship and try to take it over, then it's got to yeah. be fitted for that. I don't know. Right. Now, when I, when, to me, I guess the natural, the, the next step up, and I say to me, I guess to everybody, the next step up is as far as your, um, diplomatic um services might go would be the, the would be the caterpillar i mean isn't that i mean of course you can use any ship for you know um, that um i don't like to say that because you never want to announce that you're a pirate to anybody uh uh but caterpillar i think is the next step and i think until we get that tour of the caterpillar and kind of see how it all plays out maybe we're assuming that the cutlass is going to have a role that the caterpillar would have Okay. Good yeah. point. Yeah, it's a good point. Maybe that maybe the Cutlass is more of a smuggler type ship. The Millennium Falcon style. You pick up some cargo, you run it off. Yeah. You know, you acquire cargo through through various methods and, and run it off somewhere. So Yeah. You you, you use maritime you know, maritime law to claim cargo that is just floating in space. Right. Maybe <laughs> maybe the boarding ship is, is the caterpillar here. How it became floating in space, that's you know, that's not your concern. You're just there to yeah. rescue the cargo. I mean, it's cold in space. We want to make sure that that cargo is protected. It's a navigation hazard. I just got it out of there for the good of everyone. Yep. <laughs> so that's right. You travel through at FTL speeds. You don't want to run into that. You know, it's, bad things are bound to happen. So... This, this, these are the type of discussions that we enjoy having, um, you know, discussing the, in, the ins and outs of ships and, you know, kind of what we would like to see, what we would have done differently, what we love. I don't think any of us think that it's ugly or have buyer's remorse if we bought it. I definitely don't. Um, so what what other ships do you guys want us to talk about? What was there was there one that we're, you know, it's in the hangar that we can take you through or speculate on? Let us know in those comments and uh, make sure, you know, you're like commenting and subscribing if you haven't done so already. But uh, the second thing that we wanted to kind of talk about in again this is just because there really isn't anything else to talk about is kind of what we're looking for you know squadron 42 stuff is really starting to pick up you know foundry 42 is, is getting into full uh, in the manchester uh, studio they're really starting to start diving in and letting more information go and we talked about it early in uh, i think season one we talked about voice acting and characters and you know what what are some characters or some particular actors you know that you guys would maybe like to see or you know you thought were really funny or you know strong characters that might be good for uh the campaign you know even caricature you know style uh, players or characters well if we're talking squadron 42 campaign you know i think that they did a really good job with wing commander you had you you had paladin you had maniac mm -hmm. uh you know di completely I mean, Maniac was just that. He was a freaking maniac. You know, he would go crazy. But um, it would be nice to have a uh, have a personality like that. I don't know how you know who they could get to do it, but I would really like there to be that that pilot that may not be your wingman, but he'll he'll be flying missions with you. That is just every second of every day he needs to be reined in. Because, yeah, he's confrontational. He's always yeah. there in somebody else's face. But he's really good. But At what he, he does, exactly. He's like the Starbuck, you know. You know, they yeah. don't they don't do things, you know, by the book. But when when they do it, it they're just freaking amazing. And I I'd, I'd like to see that personality in Squadron Forty Two. 
Right. You know, that it, I like to see those characters that give a touch of color to change how things are going to be from each time that you dock. You know, I can't really say specifically one character type that I'd want to see just because, you know, in a real situation, you know, you're going to have people react differently. I think more for me, I want to see the choices that you make change right. how those people react to you. And we know that's going to be there. But exactly, I want to see those characters show that. I want to be able to feel that when they're giving their performances is what I think would really be the highlight for me. You know, I think a lot about this is this is going to be a military campaign. So an obvious parallel that you can draw, you know, for for characters and for you know players involved in these type of stories is is you know cinema. Are we going to want it to be a we were soldiers type army, you know, cast of characters where it's more serious and more somber? Or, I mean, and I'm going opposite ends of the spectrum here. Do we want it to be more space balls where, you know, it's a little <laughs> bit more, you know, crazy? Or do we want to find kind of an, an in-between, almost like a Forrest Gump where, you know, you have the very serious moments, but you have those strong characters in, yeah. you know, that that weren't so cut and dry military. They were people and they had life. Yeah. And I, I kind of think I, I want that more serious story but I definitely want characters peppered in, and I, I want the I, I want it to I want there to be struggle. I want there to be infighting. I want there to be jealousy, and competition. You know, I don't want it to be Top Gun. I want it. I want it to have some some grit and some drama to it. And then when we you know if we land on any planets, you know, throw in you know the cantina scene from Star Wars or something to to, to spice it up. But yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think I want it to be a little bit grittier and darker. What do you guys think? I kind of like the idea where you're going with that. You know, you can have an in-between. You know, it's just mm -hmm. in the military, from a military background, I can tell you that it's all in where it happens is how people change right. their color, or, you know, their personality. You know, they're going to be very relaxed and talking smack in the squadron room, but when they're out on the flight line getting ready for the mission, they're talking about, you know, everybody's focused. You know, you can have that balance. It's just finding that in the story context that's going to work with the players, uh, the players interacting and their choices, how that's going to evolve those other characters based on what you've done. And right. I, that's, I would like to see that type of thing, that they have that composure or lack thereof based off of what you have done. And I would definitely like to see that darker side because yeah. yep. that, that's what life is. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking that, uh, of course, you know, not knowing the story at all and, and how they're going to play it out. But I mean, obviously, we're going to be running into like the Van Duel and, you know, you know, all that. I, I kind of see it being, of course, this is like the cliche thing, but I have a gut feeling it's going to be like this. You know, at the beginning, you know, it's, it's probably going to be, you know, hey, we're all new. You know, we're getting in there. We're, you know, we have no idea what it's like, you know, and we're going to be serving a campaign. And, you know, everybody that we meet, you know, I'll, you know, let's just say we're all rookies, you know, and all the veterans are out there and they're all hard, you know, but all the rookies joining are all new together and we're all happy go lucky, you know, whatever. But then we get our first taste of combat and our first taste of loss. And then everything changes, you know, and. I kind of have a feeling that's the way it's going to go, but you know, that is a, it is pretty cliche. So I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh no. I was just going to say that, you know, Bobby hit on it pretty much the dichotomy of what many flight sims or space sims have done in the past that rookie. And then that sudden loss, that cliche is it's been done. And I, right. I really hope that they evolve from that. With, uh, I, to, to me, what I what I'm what I'm what I don't want to see hap what I don't want to see happen in the scope of, of cinema or even a t you know a TV series, you have a period of time that is is fixed. You know, you have a two and a half hour film, you have a fourteen episode season, whatever. There's not even in a fourteen episode season. There's not a lot of 
character development that you can do in that period yep. of time. So you have very cookie cutter type characters. There's not, yep. I mean, that's why everyone loves J.J. Abrams because he tries to break the cookie cutter. Um, yeah. Not necessarily that he does good work, and I'm not saying he does bad work, but he, it's, you know, characters are very, you know, I'm a this from that show or you're a that from that show. Um, mm-hmm. You know, in, in films, it's even worse because you have less time. It's yeah. this person is that person. And, and if it's and if it's when that person's not that person anymore that's what the film's about that transition I hope yeah. the camp I hope the story is long enough and that you can have character development and you can have the you know some you know that gung-ho person who gets shell-shocked and you know has a completely different outlook on something and where it doesn't take itself so seriously that every time you know we see a cinema scene we feel like we have to shed a tear because somebody's dead or something like that. I want those moments to where, yeah, we had this really serious encounter. Yeah, somebody died. This is terrible. But, you know, time has passed, and now we're going to a planet, and we're seeing the blue opera chick from Fifth Element and Chris Rock, like we talked about in pre-show, you know, singing in a high voice, acting a fool. I want that. I want there that 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 split to To occur. mix it up. Yeah, yeah, so you don't always just have this same story and 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 allow you to see characters in multiple perspectives the yeah. you know we're, we're fresh and we're green we had a big victory we lost a close friend we're you know we've got our tilt on at a bar you know i, I want to yep. see kind of that and i think that that's in a game like this that's so immersive i i don't want to see caricatures i don't want to see just the oh well he's the you know the hard-nosed you know asshole that's a military brat you know i, I don't want to see characters like that i want to know some of their backstory i want to see them in some different lights and uh i don't want it to be all happy i don't want it to be all sad i, I want to see that roller coaster ride of emotion and that roller coaster ride of characters and if anyone yeah. can do it chris roberts can so well there was um there was the, one of the wing commander books uh i think it was freedom flight you know, they they it was it's centered around the character Hunter, which you know is from the games. Uh, if if you played the the first you know games, and it was it was centered around him where he when he was in the cockpit, he was good at what he did, but he was very serious. You know, he, um, you know there was a there was a mission where he was flying with a rookie, and you know the rookie wasn't doing exactly what he was you know wanting him to do, and you know he kind of came down hard on him or whatever. Mm-hmm. But as soon as as soon as he went on leave. You know, he went down to this planet with a bunch of bird people, and uh, you know, he was. You, you saw another side of him. He was yeah. not necessarily an alcoholic, but you know, he liked to get his drink on. So he ruffled and... some feathers, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> so he ruffled some feathers and then shook some tail feathers. I think as long as they, as as long as they can, you know, maybe in between missions in Squadron Forty Two yeah. can have you let you spend some time to get to know the other characters so that you can kind of establish those relationships with them. Yeah. yeah. That'd be, that would be really key. You know, yeah. we've talked, we, I've talked a lot about mass effect and, and it's yeah. the way it does its character builds. And one of the things that it does so great at, or well, I really enjoyed was not when you, not the missions, the missions were just standard, typical RPG shooter elements, you know, Yep. But it was when you finished your mission and you went to your crew and you talked about what happened and yep. what their expectations are going forward. That's really good. And that's a great yeah. start. But I want it to be more complex than that. I mean, I want to yeah. see that person evolve and devolve and, yeah. and not just not uh, to me. Sta- not Effect, static personality guy. Yeah. Mass yeah. Effect even had, had it had you, you learned about the character, but that character never changed. That yeah, character they're... never, you know, you know, Caden was always this type of Caden. You know, Liara was always Liara. There, the only character to me that I felt ever changed was Tally. Everyone else was the same from beginning yeah. to end. Their perspectives might have changed, but there was never this come to Jesus moment or, you know, this happens well, and I'm this. And well, I, I'd I think, like to see some of that. Yeah, I think Mass Effect actually hit that on the best in recent games as mm-hmm. far as character development goes. Just because, you know, you have characters that you've gotten to know and because they've changed and you've had more of a interaction with them beyond the ship because like you had the citadel dlc for mass effect 3 right i thought that was a great way to get to know people you got to throw a party you got to do a bunch of stuff and that for me gave me more interaction with the characters to become involved right and if i can have that in squadron 42 that'll make me the better for it right 
and so so what i'm gathering here is i think we all just want to see more than just more than just being a passenger along for the ride we want to be that active yeah. participant yeah and we want our characters that we're playing with to be as realistic as possible and to grow and to change and not always for the best sometimes for the worst right and, uh, yeah and, and you know they, they said that you know the you've got your squadron 42 and then when you're done with squadron 42's campaign you enter the you know persistent universe one thing that i'm really crossing my fingers that they that they do well is when when i get done with the campaign i'm in the persistent universe i want to see the persistent universe as as though i made it the way it was by playing the campaign does that make any sense like the reason that things are the way they are or that there's peace in this system or something is because i just you know we finished the campaign and you know we made a difference well one thing i do know that they're going to incorporate is the relationships that you have if you burn somebody in the campaign that's going to carry over if you made a friend you, that's going to carry over so you know your ability to be able to do certain missions with greater degree of levity like if you need to get military munitions you might be able to still have that friend that can help you out you know they've talked about that a little bit but as far as what you're describing as seeing like you said the peace in a certain system i don't know if they've actually touched on that do you know much about that thomas or to be honest with you i don't want any of that really and really yeah i i don't want to be john shepherd in this game oh, okay I, yeah I, I don't want to be when, when you look at mmos like like world of warcraft and it does it great because it's got you know a shit ton of people who subscribe to that game and love it what I'm afraid of is everybody having that same experience, and and yeah. my You're most recent hero. taste, yeah, my most recent taste in my mouth of, of of World of Warcraft, and this is old content, I know, but you know, during a Cataclysm, you were going back to fight Ragnaros and all that other garbage, and you know things were getting crazy, mm -hmm. and during that process, you were doing all these dailies that unlocked new regions, and you you know you, you made peace here and and got people to get along there. And you were central to this story. You you were the reason that this happened. But every other player who did that content was central to that story and made it happen for them. So it wasn't yeah. a unique experience. But it can't be unique when you have a persistent universe. Well, so I don't true. want to be a big player. I want to be a cog in the machine that yeah. when I'm in the persistent universe, I make a name for myself. So when Squadron right. 42 is over, you don't want to step off the carrier and have a bunch of people cheering like, oh my God, there's no, no more apocalypse, do, he's so they awesome. They definitely right. can do that. But I don't want that to be that because of my individual achievements in Squadron 42, this system is at peace. I want it to be ah, that okay. the collective yeah. group of us in Squadron 42 got that area in peace. But yeah. I don't want to be the hero. I don't want to be the John and, Shepard, the whatever. And they could generalize that in a news story too, or even specifically yeah. put your name in that and tailor it to each player. Mm -hmm. You know, so that way they ha get that gratification that Bobby's talking about, you know, on top of being able to keep it from being where you're at, Thomas, where they, you know, you, you're the chosen one uh, dichotomy. So, yeah, I, I agree. That's, that's, that's a really unique concept because they can instance, to some extent, the experience that you have, you know, like, like in Mass Effect, you know, you're running through the Citadel and you'd hear those newscasts about certain things that you know that you had done as commander shepherd they could do that in the game and you know be just something like the ap newswire that you're reading on your uh, on your yeah. pad what do they call moby glass you know you're reading oh uh, so and so achieved this this and this and was able to free all these slaves on their humanitarian cutlass mm -hmm. so that's <laughs> cool um and, and i think that would be unique i just don't want to feel like i'm one of many doing a doing something that only one person can do if yeah. i'm if i if i'm being okay. championed as a hero in in the game then i want that i to be the champion hero in squadron or in the persistent universe and i don't want anyone else to be the champion hero that's you know, true I want that makes sense. unique that achievements does. to be unique enough that no one else has them or no one has. You know, I want to. If it's going to be something that's that big in the persistent universe, naming a system after you, naming a jump point, that's what I want. I don't want it to be yeah. every person who's flying next to me, every person I run across who's a real player completed that campaign, 
got a badge of honor, and when they go to their home spaceport, people throw you know lays at them. Yeah, they're, and, you know, they're the hero pace. too. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I don't. I don't yeah. want that. So, but I guess we'll have to see. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, do you guys have anything else you want to talk about before we start to wrap things up? No. Brandon, Just so I'm, over there? that I'm crossing my fingers. I'm hoping that you know we get a, <laughs> a dogfight module soon. Yeah, give us some updates. Yeah, Gee, that's that's what we're waiting on. So. Well, they have said that they're not. Go- Chris has said that they're not going to commit to another date. Right. This time around, and that I can understand. You know what I really want to see though is just more coming out of them on what they're working on, what we're going to see next in the hangar. You know, give us a little bit more in that of what we have. Give us a little bit more in that direction, because I feel like we've been. You know the Cutlass got released, and yet we have nothing to look forward to other than the DFM. Right. And I want to see a little bit more of that. Yeah, it's probably just they're in crunch mode now, and and when you're when you're in crunch mode, I'm guessing that maybe I don't know, maybe maybe they're just at a point now where they just have no idea when. You know, I'm frankly at this point with uh, with having to wait for the DFM. I I'd be just as happy as if, if they were at least a freaking planet side, you know, module. Just just something to to do, something to you know, sink some time into, yeah. you know, and I'd be pretty satisfied with that. Yep, yeah. and you know, I guess I guess we'll we'll wait and see what uh, CIG comes out there. I mean, if anyone can keep their fans entertained and wanting more, it's CIG. So uh, we'll definitely have to wait and see. Well, it is getting that time. So I think it's time for us to to pull the curtain back and, and call it a good episode. So I'm going to go ahead and sign out. This is Thomas signing out. Yep, Bobby, I'm out of here. Brandon, I'm out of here. We will catch you guys next time. Don't forget. Oh, 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 oh. My you, post, post, oh. post, 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 yep. post show. Like, comment, subscribe. You'll win some prizes next time. Origin mouse pad. Um, also, make sure that you are um, posting in those comments we're in, in YouTube or giving us reviews on iTunes. We're making sure that we reply to as many comments as we can. And, uh, you know, if you've got some ideas that you want us to talk about, drop them there. Or you can always send us an email, and that's beacon147, or sh- what is it, show at beacon147.net. Show, yeah. I can yep. never remember that. I'm so glad you pulled <laughs> that to me. But, uh, and, uh, you know, follow us on the Twitters at beacon147, or beacon147, not .net on that one. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway. <laughs> So now that I've done my subscribe plugs, good evening, everybody. We will catch you next time.